So let me ask you a question that might seem a little personal. How are you sleeping? In times where the news is frequent, how updates come and things change from day to day, as we're in crowded quarters with people or perhaps we're feeling very isolated. Sometimes our sleep can be troubled, can be challenging. Sometimes it can be hard to turn our minds off when the frets of the world creep in. It can be hard for us to, to truly rest even when we have maybe a little extra time that we weren't expecting. When the hits keep coming, it can be very difficult to feel like we can keep moving forward. I've been reflecting on this a lot. Over the course of my adult life, there's been a sequence of national emergencies. I was a freshman in college when 9-11 attacks happened. I was just getting started as an adult at that point. When Brittany and I got married and I started seminary, the recession hit in 2008 and 2009. And I weathered the storm in a job that kept me on even when many of my peers lost their work. And now this, over the course of the last several years, it's been challenging. And with new information constantly coming in day to day, and, and now with reports that the, the virus is actually here in our county, hearing things about schools changing and businesses having to take time away, and as parents figuring out what it means to be working with our kids in very close proximity, and with an, a lot of uncertainty about what the future is gonna bring. It feels like sometimes you can't get a break. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about coming to the book of Daniel. Because in the book of Daniel, we see his lack of control, where his life was taken away from what he would have wanted or expected, and how he had to deal with that. How he had to live into a different set of circumstances than he would have chosen or would have wanted. And yet God led him and led him well. And through it, we see his faithful obedience, his perseverance, and just what his life looked like that I think can give us hope at the same time when things are challenging and when it feels like sometimes we can't get a break either. This morning, we're going to continue into the second chapter of the book of Daniel. Specifically, we're going to look at verses 1 through 23. And again, I'd like to invite you to pause the video and to read this out loud to yourself. I shared last week that scripture is really written to be read aloud. It, it, you benefit from being able to share in it that way. And so I encourage you, if you're by yourself, to go ahead and read it out loud. If you're with a group of people, go ahead and choose one person to read it and have some fun with it. Make it not like a, um, a cold or boring reading because sometimes these passages can feel that way. But take time to enjoy it. This is kind of a funny one, uh, but it's also a really exciting one to see how God moves in it. Go ahead and pause the video, read through this section, and then we're going to talk about it when we come back. So Daniel, chapter 2. We see the situation that gets set up as he has inherited this problem. I think it's absolutely fascinating the fact that Daniel isn't even involved in the conversation for half of this passage. That this is the King Nebuchadnezzar and his problems along with all of Daniel's co-workers. That they are the ones who are struggling to figure this out and it's just not coming together. And now because of what's happened with them, now Daniel's life is in danger. He comes into this finding out that people are looking for him to be destroyed. In verse 13, it talks about now the decree has gone out and the wise men were about to be killed. They sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. He wasn't even there. And you can imagine how difficult that would be to come into this situation after being taken from their families, having lost their sense of racial identity, their faith identity, being thrust into this place that's trying to make them different than who they were in isolation from everything they knew. And now their lives are in danger. And Daniel's response is absolutely amazing. You can see how he doesn't panic. It'd be very easy. I mean, it's literally saying that they're seeking them out to kill them. And Daniel replied in verse 14, it says, he replied with prudence and discretion. There's a slow response. 
filled with wisdom, that he responds to the captains of the king's guard, the one who went out to kill him, and he tells him, slow down, I want to meet with the king. And then he walks away. Very simple statement. Very wise, but very simple. And then in verse 17 through 19, we see what Daniel does in the face of fear and in the face of uncertainty and in the face of death. What Daniel does in verse 17, it says, Daniel went to his house and made the matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. And he told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. So Daniel, in the face of seeing this fearful circumstance, seeing that his life is in danger, and the task that they've been given is frankly impossible, they are supposed to tell the king what he dreamed and then tell him what it meant. That's what they are supposed to communicate. In the face of this impossible task, Daniel goes to his friends and asks them to seek after God and to seek his mercy. And then he goes to sleep. He doesn't spend all night fretting about it. He doesn't spend all night trying to research the answer. He doesn't try to run away. Instead, he goes to his friends, he goes to God, and he sleeps. He puts his faith and trust, his hope, knowing that he has a meeting with the king coming up. Instead of becoming frantic and being filled with panic, he responds in prayer, and then he can let go, and he can actually rest. This is a radical picture of trust, of being able to believe that God is able and strong, and that he is the one who can care for and save him. It's a beautiful picture. And God responds. He trusts him, and he turns to him. And God shows him what he needs to see. And then Daniel responds with that beautiful prayer that was our call to worship earlier. He says, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and reveals to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise. Daniel knows that God is strong, that he is the source of all knowledge and that he is the hope and he praises him because of it. He knows that he can rest in him. And knowing that it is the rest that God brings, it sounds awfully similar to what Psalm 127 has to say. In verse 2, it says, It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For he gives to his beloved sleep. In times like these, it can be very easy to eat the bread of anxious toil. To feel that in working harder or planning better, that we can set ourselves up for success. But in trusting God, acknowledging his strength, his mercy, and that he is enough to save, that we can find peace and that we can find rest for our souls. Today, we can rest and trust in the work of Christ. Today, when we don't know what the future is going to bring, what the next few weeks are gonna look like here in our community and here in our world, we can rest and trust in Christ because he is strong and able and enough. He is the one who is in control. He is the one who is good. And just like Daniel could rest in what God was going to do, we can too. Because God has something for us in the midst of all of this. And we can rest in him and trust him because he is enough. And then on the other side, 
in seeing what it is that God is going to do, we can praise him because of how he does move. So for us in this time, for those who put our trust in Christ, the question becomes, can we really rest in trusting him? Can we look to see where it is that he may be positioning us, could be preparing us to care for others and to demonstrate how trustworthy he is and how much we really can lean on him in these times of fear. There is an opportunity for us to trust more fully in Christ and to demonstrate to the world that he is someone they can turn to as well. As things change day to day, my hope is that our rest can truly be in Christ. Because of him, we can know a hope that is not dead, but is alive because he is alive. And so we respond in that trust, in proclaiming the living hope that is found in Christ. So let us continue in worship as we turn to God today.